So let's talk about a little nice feature of Quas that is called cross-domain authentication. Uh, indeed, it's not a real feature of Quas, but it is pretty much a common technique used in Active Directory environments. Uh, the basic principle on this is you have two domains and uh, you want to have some kind of trust relationship between these two domains because you have in one domain all your users and in the other one you have all your computers. So the user, you have a user domain and you have something like uh, that's called a resource domain where all your resources are located. Or you have maybe two different domains, maybe you're coming from a merger or you put stuff together, whatever it, it is, but you want maybe the, that users from a certain domain are able to log into computers in a different domain in a, in a secured way. This is called something that, that's called cross-domain authentication because you're logging into a, to a system of a different domain and you authenticate to the other domain. And of course we're going to use Quest to implement this using the Kerberos technique. So I have prepared a little bit here on my test environment and I have two domains. One of them is called pass4u.demo. This is my main domain where all my users are located. And the other one is the so-called demo.corp domain. This is where all the other ones are located. So that is my resource domain. Um, if you have a look on this here, you're going to see this all here in the, on the screen with all these various stuff shown here. So everything that goes for pass4u.demo is my original domain, my master domain, and the other one is the resource domain, demo.corp. The first thing you need to establish between these two domains is a trust relationship. In this case, you only need a one-way trust relationship. You could have two-way, but then, of course, somebody from the other domain can reach out to the other domain as well. But you don't want that because you just want to have users from one domain reaching out to the other domain and not the different direction back to you. The first one, so you have to get to your management console. In this case, I have a management console, a management PC I'm using. And now you have to establish all these trust relationships. And the trust relationship is established using the standard Microsoft Management Console. So this is basic Active Directory management we are talking about now. So the first thing you may have to launch is your trust tool in Microsoft the Directory Management. And this is usually called Active Directory Domains and Trust. And you're going to see that I'm now connected to my pass4u.demo domain. You simply can click on properties of that domain and then you're going to see that there are a couple of tabs you can select and one of them is trusts or trusts. So in this case you're going to see that I have already defined a single one-way trust relationship to my domain demo.corp. If I click on the properties, so you see the, the domain is passed for you.demo, the other domain is demo.corp. And the trust type is a forest trust. You can have different settings on this as well, depending on your configuration. But the really important thing is that you have a forest transitive trust and the direction of trust as well. So in this case, it is a so-called incoming trust because you have an incoming trust request from the other domain to your domain. So this is an incoming trust relationship uh, from the other domain to your domain. So that means other user, other requ uh, authentication requests will come from the other domain and they will authenticate on your domain. That's the direction. But you don't want to have it in a different way. It is a little bit confusing about the naming, but you're going to get familiar once you have just laid out this and see how this really works. So that's the first thing we need. And the other thing is, of course, we need to have uh, some kind of users. So, if I use this tool as well and click on the Managed, it will come up with the Admin Active Directory Users and Computers console. And you're going to see that in my pass4u.demo domain, I have con I just have created some kind of container. This, in this case, I've named it ex External Demo Corp. And there I have a couple of sub OUs or whatever, but this is really up to you and or how your structure is depending on your requirements or your organizational structure or whatever. 
So in this case, maybe I'm, I'm in EMEA, so I'll just click on the EMEA and I have some kind of EMEA groups and of some kind of EMEA users. So you see a couple of users here defined and this is um, that these users are defined here in my domain. And the other domain, like the demo.corp domain, it does not have users. It just has the resources like the computers. So, and one of the computers I have located in that domain is something that is called, let me just check, it is host-6. So now let's, let's just log into these hosts in the other domain. Just use the root account and give it the password. And I'm logged in. Just to show you that this host is just joined to the domain and it has the Crash software installed and it's working properly, we're going to use the usual commands like opt quest bin vas2. Yeah. Now here we go. And it, come back with no, it comes back with no errors, so that is just indicating that this host is joined to the domain, VAS tool is well, over the VAS or QAS software is installed, and everything's working fine. So authentication service is working properly, and that's all we need. So the next things we're going to do is about the configuration settings on these various ma machines, just to glue them all together to use this cross-domain authentication stuff. Okay, so let's get back to our management station. And here we are again. So we see all these computers in, in, my, in my standard domain and my user accounts. And of course, I can just check or give you, give you, the, give you the proper definitions of that user again. Let's select some kind of users. Let, let's say this is me, a user one, maybe for instance. Come on. Give the properties, and if if you if you just select this Unix account tab, that comes from the uh, Quest software that is installed on my management system as well. You're going to see that this user is standard Unix enabled. It has a proper you know, Unix ID. It has a proper group ID, and so on and so on. All the usual stuff. You make sure that this is really done before, because otherwise, of course, yeah, it will not work. Okay, so. That is all the prereqs you have to do, and of course you then have to tweak a little bit uh, to instruct all the Quest systems where to look, how to work with that together. The next thing you have to do is about the modification of the Quest configuration. So the next thing we're just going to go is about, we're going to go back to our uh, host we have been logged in before. And if we just take a look into the uh, configuration file of the authentication services. This is located in etz opt quest vas and you're gonna have this vas.conf file in that uh, in that directory. So vas.conf goes here and if you look uh, take a look into the configuration files you're gonna notice a couple of uh, configuration settings that are not uh, there if you have just the standard environment and one of the things is user search path. User search path is to tell the system where to look for the user accounts that it should allow login. And, and in this use case here, we have the search path set to the external domain. So in this case, I am on the demo.corp and my search path reaches out to my pass 4 demo domain. So logging into that system instructs this, the, the Quas software to look to the other domain uh, if it wants to verify or to authenticate with, with users. And of course, uh, the, the same goes for the group search path. And uh, the other ones you have to adjust is something that is called the host services. Host services is binding the appropriate Kerberos authentication mechanism and information to that host. And as you see, there is a Kerberos name and there is a key tab file. And this is something where Kerberos stores the authentication of the service user it is using to authenticate uh, to the other domain and to verify the appropriate login information and uh, passwords. And this one is uh, a key file that is generated on the other domain. 
because yeah, it comes from the other domain. And if you don't have a proper key file from the other domain, you cannot authenticate via Kerberos to the other domain, of course. So if you need that key file, you must create it on the other domain and then it needs to be transferred to your system. And to generate all these key files, you can use the VAS tool. That is, that's a proper installation guide in the manual that instructs you how to generate that file. And then you just copy it over to that host and everything should be okay. But of course, uh, I have seen customers that are not allowing Unix commands from whatever software vendor to, to be run on Windows machines or on, on, on their Active Directory. So if you just want, are restricted to use Microsoft-based commands only, you of course can use the Microsoft tools that are usually named KTPass. So you can instruct uh, your Active Directory administrators to use uh, KT Pass, and then they're going to set up the appropriate key file for you. And once you receive that key file, you can copy it over and it will work in the same way. So once you have done this, you simply can just try to verify that the connectivity is working. So just by simply uh, uh, calling the VAS tool again, but now just list users. And you're going to see that it lists users not located on your own domain, but located on the different domain. So that verifies that it, at least it can reach out to the other domain and get the information from the domain controller of the other domain. And of course, if everything is set right, you could simply log in with the other domain user. So in this case, you just use EMEA user1. And you know, this is not a user of the local domain of the host 6 I'm, I'm not currently connected to. and just give it the password and you're logged in. And if you just click on ID or just or who am I, whatever, um, you see that you are logged in with the uh, user account of the other domain to that, to that resource host in the other domain. So that is cross-domain authentication is working.